All right, this video is for our uh, operational and startup for our cold water jetters, uh, cold water hydro jetters. Uh, first things first, find your uh, toolbox and uh, your operational manuals. So grab those, go through the trailer upon receiving, make sure all the nuts and bolts, just take a quick check out of everything. We re-torque the lug nuts, but when you get it, go ahead and haul it and uh, just, just check, make sure no nuts have come loose. Occasionally they do, uh, which is something you'd always want to do. Uh, going back to uh, your owner's manual and your checkout sheets. Uh, so initially when you get it back to your shop, there's an article that OSHA has for PPE, Personal Protective Equipment brochure that kind of covers all the, the uh, OSHA requirements for this equipment for safety, which I'll get into in a sec here. So you've got a startup procedure written out, kind of a basic startup. Also inside the jetter, you'll have some startup procedures if you've got the toolboxes. Some packages got toolboxes, some don't. So, uh, if not, we can PDF those and email it to you. Uh, basic startups. You've got a uh, safety overview, which I want to cover here on safety a little bit. Uh, job site checkup. Um, we're gonna we're gonna kind of go over the safety quick here, and then we'll go over the operational on it. Uh, on the back of this unit, the, the first safety is not to, whenever you start it, make sure your hose reel is in the off position and then activate the hose reel valve that's back here when you're, when you're running. We'll go over that when we operate. Uh, make sure you mark your hose so when you're coming back out of the line, you know where your hose is at. A lot of guys will just use one mark or some will use three so they know when they're getting close. That's the number one area of injuries in this industry is if that nozzle comes out of the pipe under pressure, uh, can really whip around, it can cut you, kill you. Um, that's pretty serious under pressure. You don't ever want that to happen. Uh, wearing eye, eye and hand protection, I think is real mandatory. You're dealing with sewage uh, most of the time. So you want some uh, really pretty good gloves to protect yourself and we'll we'll grab those eye protection we include eye protection in it and as you go through here you can kind of check your parts uh, damaged and weakened hose if you've got severe hose cuts uh, replace that hose uh, injuries have happened with the damaged hose uh, close to 4,000 psi you're you're very serious uh, level of uh, PSI and that'll just cut you in half so common sense is replace that hose when it gets cut. Um, the other thing to be aware of and this is on our safety checkout sheet that's in in this is that when you're cleaning you get a lot of backflow uh, uh, material coming back so you want to protect your eyes again eye protection or even a face shield provide your guys with the face shield and take a minute and evaluate your location, where you're working at, where the spray is going to come at. Um, of course, ultimately, safety's up to the operator and the company that's training them. We'll, we'll try to give most all of that, best we can. Um, so you've got you've got this sheet that comes in. This is your operational manual, and uh, our our little uh, checkout sheet on the equipment and on the trailer uh, goes through the trailer checkout. Almost all of our trailers except for the single axles have got the bigger ball, the 2 and 5 sixteenths. Make sure your trailer's big enough and your truck, well the trailer's big enough, but the truck's big enough to haul the weight. So you want a heavy half at least or a three quarter depending on if you're going to haul with water or not. If you're going to haul with water you want a pretty good truck. Make sure your brakes work. Make sure your hitch is good sized. Make sure your brakes are working. Uh, common sense stuff, but but it's also safety out there. You don't want anybody getting hurt. You don't want to get hurt. Uh, again, this form we can email 
the safety and jetter usage form. Uh, we do email it to you. We, we try to get everybody emailed, but uh, have it on file and have it for your guys. Make, make them sign it off, and that makes you review it with, with everybody. And then inside here, we've got a jetter site location pre-check list. So it goes through the trailer, <clears throat> power unit, nozzles. You know, you don't want to drive out to a job and not have the right nozzles. Uh, job site checklist goes through all that pretty good. So as you go through it and go over the equipment, make sure that shows up. Uh, the next clip I'll go over operation, operation uh, pre-setup. Thanks. All right, this is our pre-operational checklist, let's call it that. Uh, I'm going to start at the front. You got a tuned 5 16th ball again. This is a breakaway for a, uh, uh, you hook that on, hook that to your truck in case the trailer breaks away, it'll lock, it'll, this pops out, it'll lock the brakes up. Safety feature you only see on 10,000 pound rated trailers. Um, of course, that's a round uh, plug six, six way. Uh, your uh, battery box is here for the uh, trailer. They say keep that charged up. Good idea. Uh, going over the front of the equipment, these are your pre filters before the water feeds into the head of the pump. So that one's 80 mesh, this one's 50. Things brand new, they're clean. You've got your oil, pump oil drain right here. It drains real slow, but it's a lot better than trying to get back in there. We install that. Pump site, oil halfway up, that's perfect. Somewhere around half is good. 30 weight non-detergent, uh, best oil you can find. Put on that, call us, call Chester. We can hook you up the oil if you need be. And uh, this is a primer valve right here. So if it's running and you've got, you think you've got some air in it, you've got water in the tank, it's not pumping water. It's just like it's actually an air valve as well. But that will uh, help uh, get the, purge the air out and then you're, uh, get rid of your airlock. This valve here is your hammer valve, hammers the hose. When it's open, it's on. When it's off against grain, it's, uh, it's not uh, bypassing the water to this chamber. That's how it works. So you're running on two cylinders. That's what gets the pulsation out in your hose. Uh, fuel filter for the motors here. Oil dip stick, you can call that. Uh, choke, hour meter, tachometer and uh, this unit's gasoline. Whenever it's hot, don't fuel it up. Give it a minute or two before you fuel it up. Don't fuel it up while you're running. This is also going to be red hot, of course, if it's been running. Uh, so kind of walking back through, got a battery box. Bigger the better as far as batteries. This is where you hook on your uh, wash down hose or your pressure hose. I like to run the jumper hose off of that. You've got your relief valve here. Unloader valve as it's called in the industry. And we generally preset that. If you ever got to adjust that, call me or Chester and we'll tell you how to or our service guys and we'll tell you how to adjust it. This unit's uh, when it's when this is unloaded, let's call it, and you're not pumping water, that water's going to go back to the tank. It's our pump saver system, works beautifully. Uh, high pressure line is out of here, water line's here. This valve right here determines whether or not you're going to draw <clears throat> antifreeze through the system or water out of the water tank. You have to follow that arrow. That arrow's this way so we know we're on the water tank. You can kind of see that. Familiarize yourself with that valve, it's a good idea. Right now I'm on the antifreeze tank. See it's going this way. And that's the antifreeze. So if it's winter time, this unit's shipped with antifreeze in the lines and in the hose. So that hose, the, the pressure hose, needs to be brought around, put in the antifreeze tank, 
and then you recapture the antifreeze. Uh, the process of that is you turn this to fresh water, bring the hose around, it's a two-man operation, put the antifreeze, put the hose in the tank, run it until you see the line clear and then the antifreeze is cleared. Then put your nozzle on and, and go to work, follow that routine as far as jetting. Uh, we've got about a half tank of water, this is your pressure gun holder, uh, strobe light, this is our jumper, jumper hose reel or small hose reel. We'll run that in a minute. On the back side here, you've got your rear lights. They're LEDs. Pretty good lights. You've got your on and off valve for your hose reel. That's in the off position with the line. That's, that's in the on position. So off, on, pretty, pretty basic there, but really important. You never want to start it in the on position. Uh, I don't have anybody, you know, do that. You got to be careful. That's one of the safety areas right there. Uh, right here you've got our easy start valve, we call it. <clears throat> A lot of times somebody will start the unit up and say, hey, it won't build pressure. It's usually because this valve's in the on position. And again, that's with the grain. So that's on. Against, against it's off. So we're going to make, we're going to get this in the pre-start position. That's on, and that's off. That's pre-start. This reel's for filling the water tank. If you want to fill it at your, at your shop, uh, you can hook that up, or you can fast fill. You know, some of these have the, the fill, so you can hook a, a two-inch line off a fire hose or water truck. And then your drain, you got a big drain back here. Of course, that's against the grain, that's valving. Against the grain, with the grain, so pretty, pretty basic there. Uh, back side, we've got the throttle. Here, it's right here on the side. So whenever I start, I like a little bit of juice to the engine, a little bit of throttle, not too much. Um, I, don't like, I don't like to start it wide open, so usually all the way in and out, of, about a full turn is plenty. Uh, of course, your hose reel. This has got the upgraded reel, the thumb control hose reel. Uh, variable speed is right here. I'm going to set it a little slower so it doesn't surprise you when you turn it on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. I'm going to go ahead and start it. We're in the pre start position. Always double check. Easy start valves on, we'll call it that. Uh, hose reel's off. Water tank's on. Got water in the tank. Uh, oh, I didn't show the uh, soap line right here. This is for uh, uh, the soap. And this is feeding, feeding pre-pump. Really go over that soap tank. I'll show it real quick. That's about the only thing I think I missed. But the little soap tank's here. You can kind of follow the line there. I recommend putting two quarts in and then fill the rest with water. So it's eight gallons, two quarts in. You don't want it too foamy. You want a, a nice nice measured foam as we, we call it out there. You don't want too much foam in it, but uh, uh, it's got a little bit of soap. We'll run a little bit of soap. Soap detergent, our three-in-one's great product. We're not selling anything in this video. So I'm gonna turn that on just a little bit. Uh, right here's your tack and hour meter. So we've got uh, no RPM. Kind of going through it. 0.5 hours. So we've run this half hour. This is your choke. I'm going to go ahead and choke this unit. We're going to go ahead and start. We're green light to start. So I'm going to get my gloves on. That's warming up. I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, put our warthog nozzle on. Grab a couple wrenches here. Now, on some job sites, 
Now, if you're going to clean a big pipe, which, you know, we occasionally have people do, we appreciate you calling in and letting us know, is after you've got your nozzle on, do a bend test. This warthog nozzle, this would be good to show this up close, Chester. So if you've ordered the warthog nozzle, which we'll demonstrate first, it's got a little gasket right here. <clears throat> Where's my voice? So once you've, you pull that gasket, put it on the hose, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. It'll fit my hand. I'm really loose. Okay. Now, if you don't tighten that on and you lose it, we don't warranty it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good enough for demonstration purposes. So once that's in, and I like to, then you got to put that gasket back up in there. Now I'm going to do a bend test real quick. That's what warthog people do. It's in their literature. Now I'm going to see if that'll turn around. Now this, this is a leader hose on this. Our hose is also marked. The leader hose, you know, this 15 feet, you know when it's coming back out of the pipe. Now on a 12 inch line like this, you know, that could easily come back on you. So we have a stinger we'll put on when we do this bigger pipe. This size, uh, I don't know debatable but if there's any question you might as well do it so we'll go ahead and clean the small pipe and then we'll put the uh, the addition on here the bend restrictor to keep that from bending back but I'm gonna insert that two three feet in the line Got a one-man jet in operation today which is fine <coughs> I'm gonna take my tools out of my pocket at least one tool out of my pocket all right, so back here, I'm gonna, I know the easy start valves, let the unit warm up. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. Yeah, so that's on. That's just circulating the water through the whole unit. And that lets it warm up, takes the pressure off the head when you start. So when I shut that off, you can hear the unloader valve kicking. So this is the control valve again for the hose reel. I'm going to lock my hose reel in. Right there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. We're in the pipe and then I'm going to throttle up. I'm going to give it a little juice. Bring that hose in. Go ahead and pop that. Speed that up just a little bit. Yeah, 
I'm gonna go ahead and hook the uh, stinger on that. machine can idle all day as long as you got fuel run all day see how tight see if that cinched itself up Expensive nozzle. I'm not going to pipe dope this or tape it. Okay. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Put the hog back on. gasket on there. So there's a little stinger to keep that nozzle from coming around in the pipe. We got that hooked on right like that. A regular hose isn't as flexible as the uh, leader hose. Insert that in the pipe. Always check for back debris because when that's shooting backwards, uh, it can throw uh, rocks or whatever back at you. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in my hose drill again. And go ahead and uh, op activate the hose drill. gas. I'm taking a little bath. I'm going to scoot that a little bit. See, I like that soap, soap amount right there. Go ahead and rev this up. And there goes the hose. bit of leak here that ought to be taped up you know high pressure water shooting into your hands we'll clean this bigger one I'll kind of scoot it over too yeah that'd have a hell of a time turning around back on you that's a good size stinger right there all right Hang on to this hose a little bit.
12 inch pipe. I'm not even revved up. Okay, now that now that we've cleaned the the pipe, I'm going to bring the reel in, in the, reel in, reel in the hose. <laughs> Be careful not to pinch your fingers on this. It's a good idea to have a rag or a sanitizer. I let you know keep your hose clean. Good advice. Okay, set this up here. I'm going to pin this up. Well, set that there. You can kind of bring that in. Be a good idea to take it out and then bring it all the way in. But we're just making a video here. Then you take off your, your nozzle and store it right. I want to show the other nozzles real quick uh, that come with this unit. And we'll run the jumper hose. You've probably seen these in our uh, other videos. You got a de-icer. Uh, that's the quarter inch knob. I'm going to grab that because we're going to clean. We're going to run the little jumper reel next. Uh, you also got your button nozzles. One has a one's a flusher. That's that's the uh, thruster, so it's got a hole in the front. And this one's just a flusher. Just has the rear nozzles. Pipe clean out or your nozzle clean out tool. And this is your your rotor jet that cleans the sides of the pipe. Warthog's kind of replaced all these, but uh, again, price-wise and return on investment consideration, these are still doggone good nozzles. Uh, another thought, just uh, when, when you get the machine, when I go ahead and hook up the jumper nozzle, is to run this as a, like the power washer feature. It's a good startup spot sometimes to, to familiarize yourself with the machine. So I'm going to take the... Uh, the pressure wash hose. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the gun to it. I kind of cover that. Put this hose over. So I'm going to go ahead and quick couple this on right here. I'm going to go through a quick mantle check. Water's off, or water's onto the tank. Hose reel's off. Quick start valve. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the off position. That's against the grain. I'm going to hook the gun up, gun and wand up, and just kind of show how this operation works. This is a good way to familiar out, familiarize yourself with the equipment. I'm going to go ahead and open the valve that feeds the gun. And go ahead and bring this out and run it just a little bit. Assume we got a little cleanup to do out here. That's got a lot of kick to it, so basically all your water jetting equipment's just big water blasters, that's what we build. This is a good routine to go through to familiarize yourself with the equipment. I'm going to shut this off, let the pressure off. Stole my gun. And then we're going to hook up and clean a small line here. I like to use that side hook up and bring this out over here off the side a little bit get this to where I can feed it in the line so we're going to clean a lateral line here you want to get your hose all dangled up too much okay I got to hook a nozzle onto that We got our quarter inch nozzles. 
I run both these, they're, they're both pretty good. That's going on pretty good. I'm not going to even ranch it on there. I'm going that way. All right. Look at this it's going to flow in good. Okay, we're in line. Put the hose in line. I don't like to rev up the machine when I run this. I like to run it just just about half throttle, quarter throttle. Oh, I gotta turn my pressure on. Okay, now my line's pressurized. Pants up. All right, there we go. Good little nozzle there. We'll grab the other nozzle. This is a pipe cleaner nozzle. Got my top pocket. Okay, this is the pipe cleaner nozzle. Really deep clean, see small pipes. shows that. Now one thing that's really important when you shut your water off here when you shut your water off you're still under pressure. So you want to let that pressure off. That's real important that you let pressure off because this hose it's like a uh, snake skin. It uh, swells up and holds some pressure so we let that pressure off. That could give you some new dental work, so be careful on that. I'll wrap all this up, stow it. Make sure you put all your parts away, connect your hose drill to the connector so you're not dragging your warthog nozzle. Put all your stuff away and check your lights and off you go to another job. Thanks, man.